Hello everybody. I just wanted to make a little video to show you how to construct assignments and what to include on, on assignments and just to show you that all assignments look a little bit diff different depending on the teacher but there's some key ingredients that they must include. Now this is the unit specification from Edexcel which you should all be aware of. I'll just make it a bit smaller to get more on the page. We can scroll down and we get the aims and the purpose and the unit introduction and the learning outcomes. There's our learning outcomes. It's really important when we're presenting the material to the students that we try and cover all of these learning outcomes even if they're not in the grading criteria because it's important they've at least been exposed to some of these ideas at least once. So that's what we should be teaching over our 15 or 20 week slots. After that, we've got the assessment grading criteria. So in order to pass the unit, they have to carry out quantitative or qualitative analytical techniques, etc. So we've got four pass criteria, four merit criteria, uh, as three merit criteria and three distinction criteria. And we have to incorporate these criteria into some sort of assessment. And usually they map across, so P1 to D1, P2 and P3 all the way with M2, D2 and P4, M3, D3. They map across, so we get, in this example we will really be looking for three assignments. Now what's really important here is to be aware of right from the get-go of these personal learning and thinking skills and they've been mapped in for you here, so EPSM, EPSM. Um, you can look in the uh, BTEC specification and you'll find a grid where they're all mapped across so you've got SM, self manager and effective participator and if you want uh, a, a greater definition of these they're all up here in the BTEC specification and it's well worth having a read through because these are some of the skills that we've got to develop with our students ok so let's go back to that original one now we've got to incorporate these into an assignment structure. Now when you first read these, sometimes I feel that they can be a little bit confusing or you're not entirely sure what they want from just reading these short statements. So if you scroll down through the specification, you'll see some examples of delivery and an outlined learning pl plan, which are good for you as a template. But the most important thing here, I feel, is this assessment section here. It tells you exactly what they're expecting. And in the latest EV report for our department, um, the EV really wanted us to concentrate on what was being said here in the assessment section. And he actually picked me up on a couple of things on this unit uh, that I'm going to show you today. And that's why I wanted to include this in the video. So read what they're expecting here and try and incorporate it into your assignment. And it can be quite different. And so uh, if you don't want to be picked up during external examinations, so external verification, make sure you read this section and try and incorporate this into the student's uh, questions and hopefully coax out the student answer. Um, I just want to bring you through, the, this is a program of suggested assignments which you may or may not use and uh, it's got essential resources, reading that would be good and also the delivery of the personal learning and thinking skills which is so important this year to make sure we highlight this to the students and signpost it in our assignments. Okay, So uh, let's get back to the grading criteria. now. For this uh, particular assignment, I produced this little work booklet, so Unit 4, Scientific Principles, little picture. And uh, this was my first one, Unit 4, Assignment 1, Junior Technician Role. And what I've done there is I've displayed the criteria. This is so important that the students have the exact criteria. So P4, use instrument sensors to test substances or materials and there I've highlighted the EP and SM, the thinking skills. Now, all I've done is selected this data like this, so it's highlighted, right click, copy, 
and I've pasted it directly into this table. Now it's important that it work, you don't have to copy and paste it, if you want to type it out yourself that's fine, but it must be exactly the same as in the manual, it can't be any different than what's in the manual. So you can add all the grading criteria like this. The next important thing you need to include on your assignment is the scenario, which we've got here, which is just highlight. So I've just done a little scenario here because really my tasks are practical based tasks and so there's no need for a case study or for, for some sort of transition into questions. I just want a little case study, a little uh, scenario which says uh, this is where they could possibly do this type of thing and when they go to most workplaces they will be required to do some type of induction on equipment. The next thing uh, you have to do after you've done your scenario is to start doing your assignment tasks. So my first one there, P4, was use instrument sensors to test substances or materials. And these are the f these are the um, tests that I'm going to do. Viscosity of washing up liquid, measuring the concentration of iodine, and calibrating a pH meter. I think that these were good enough tasks to meet the criteria. They met with the assessments in the original specification. And then, in order to back this up, I've got them to talk about uh, the instruments they've used, the experiment they've used them in, and then to explain exactly what each instrument is and how it does. How does it work, sorry. And for M4, I've got a little assessment, and then for D3, it's the evaluation. Now, because uh, when students do these uh, assessments, they're often... Uh, questioning and querying what, what do they need to include, I often put at the end of mine a guidance sheet and checklist and these are all the things that they need to do. So for P4, have you completed the four experiments above? Have you completed the table? And they can just tick it off when they've done it. It's quite a good way for them to work out what they need to do. Um, you can also add some little extra help. So for the colorimeter, you, you know, for D3 here, I've put some little questions for them to take into consideration they can tick them off as they're going along. Again I did uh, for assignment 2 I did the same thing all these key elements criteria from the specification scenario tasks and then followed by a guidance sheet and I've done that all the way through now all assignments don't have to look like this and what I've done here is I've just got some assignments from last year to just view We've got, um, this one is for a level 2 pharmacy, Jane's done a, a work pass booklet and she's put a nice little front sheet there and then as you go down she's put all the unit information which comes straight from the specification, all the assessment cr criteria just listed in one lump sum with a key for the personal learning skills which is quite good, quite like that idea. And then um, she has put all of the questions in a workbook format like this so with little spaces for people to fill in which is again a very good idea and uh, it's just a different way of laying out your format so I'll put that up on the fronter for you to have a go and you copy and feel free to copy all these formats the next one is this is a unit 2 one looks very similar working in the science industry I think Michelle France uh, again it's got all the learning material which I actually quite like and I've changed a lot of mine to be look a bit like this. All the key criteria, some tick lists and uh, there's some questions for them to fill in which again this is another past booklet and here's a case study. But you've got to remember when you're doing it this way is um, you've got to have uh, a scenario and I think if I just have a look now on this one it hasn't got a scenario and so, you know, again, so when you're IV in this, you'd have to pick this up with the tutor and say there's no scenario. Maybe if they started with this case study, it might be a little bit better, but you've always got to remember to do that. I think I've got one more to look at. Yeah, this is this is another one I did at the start of the year. It's quite basic again. But uh, in this one, I put the criteria straight from the specification there and then I put task number where they can complete them and then evidence that must be included just another way of doing it and I've got my scenario and then I've got my tasks 
and this time I've done worksheets which they fill in in class which makes it a lot easier and the little task that they do in class so they can get some credit for it but when you do these little tasks in class uh, you have to collect the, uh, some photographic evidence and keep their activity and then I've got an experiment and some more questions so I mean it, there's various ways you can set out I'll leave these all up so you can copy them and cut and paste and your own formats in once you've finished your uh, assignment um, you you're writing you also have to hand out at the same time this assignment front sheet which I've got here and uh, so I'll go through the assignment front she sheet the first thing you'd put in was the qualifications so this one was BTEC extended diploma in a Applied Science. Unit for me would have been, I'll oh, just correct that diploma. diploma. This one is Unit 4. So add that data there. Tutor is me. I'm not going to look at capitals and everything. Internal Verify could be Trisha here. And this is an important point. All your work's got to be internally verified, and it's your responsibility to get that internally verified. So find a tutor or ask one of the tutors by email, can you verify my work, and then you can insert their name there. This is where the student puts their name, really important. And this is this is a really important thing. They have to sign and date this, so make sure they get it done right at the beginning of the course. You put your assignment title out there, so it could be uh, working in a science lab, or whatever your assignment's called. Assessment number, well this is booklet one for me. Date to be submitted, so I'm going to say, well, this booklet will take me 12 weeks, so I'm going to say 17th of December for the whole booklet to be delivered. Date set would be early on in the year, so 12th September. So that's the final date when they can get all the work in. And I'm going to say C attached portfolio. So I'm going to put my assignment behind this front sheet. Do you require risk assessments? Well in my case it's all experimental so I'm going to say yes there. If yes, do not proceed unless you've understood the requirements. Yes we've done that. Summary of learning outcomes. This is, comes from the specification. So I can go to my specification, get the learning outcomes there's the summary there. Got those guys. Insert them in there. There's my learning outcomes. Scroll down. Now pass criteria. You insert all the pass criteria for your courses. So you come along P4. my P4 criteria there M3 and you get the picture, I'm not going to fill them all in now but you put your criteria in there, the exact criteria from the specification and then you've got to write some comment in these and sign and date them so give yourself a little bit of room only put the criteria for each assignment now my workbook here is for all of the unit and so I'm going to have to put in all of the criteria for the whole unit but if you do that you must have enough assessment feedback sheets at the back you don't have to give the whole unit worth of assignments at once you can give an assignment at a time but if you do that you need an individual front sheet for each if you're doing it my way where you're giving out a whole booklet you need to put all the criteria in there and it's really important you sign them and date them so the external verifier and internal verifier can see that you've been continually assessing and giving feedback but also what you need to do is you need four of these sheets at the back and they need to be labeled assignment one two and three so in my case I've got three assignments in total in this booklet so I'll need three of these worksheets so all you do is three so now I've added three assignment 
summary sheets so I can give feedback on the individual assignments uh, so the students can improve and have a second attempt and that's it that's how you fill in your front sheet so it's fairly easy fairly standard all the information is on the specification and uh, once you've finished your assignment front sheet and you finished your assignment the next stage is to IV the assignment which I'll do in the next video